Hi, I'm Lola Dalala and I am a web developer advocate and technologist and I am the host of the Lost in the Source podcast which you may have heard over the last few years on and off. We're in a season of off again, <laughs> um, but maybe that's gonna come back, maybe. For now, I've decided to try and branch out into video tutorials, just because I know that a lot of people are visual learners and tech education is something I really care about. So today, I'm going to be showing you how you can implement dark mode on your website using three main tools, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. If you are a complete beginner, this may not be for you. However, you don't need to be an advanced user of HTML, CSS, or JavaScript to be able to follow this tutorial. I'm going to explain things as I go along and hopefully you'll be able to catch. If not, there's actually a written version of this tutorial and also a GitHub repo with all the files and everything in it, which you can check out for yourself. So I'll link those below. So let me show you what we're gonna be making today. So this is the completed version of what we're gonna be doing. And it's just my basic website. It lives at lolaodelola.dev. And as you can see, it's just an image, um, a title, a header, um, two blocks of text, two paragraphs of text, and two buttons. Um, we're gonna change some of the colors, so don't worry about that. Um, and then there's some things down here, the date, and then the nav, right? First, I wanna show you something cool before I toggle that button, right? So in my system preferences, I've set my appearance to light, which is just to say I wanna use the light theme in you know, my laptop. If I switch my system preferences to dark, as you can see, the system preference box changed and my website changed too. So it picked up the colors that for my dark theme, just based off of me switching, toggling the light theme in my system preferences on my laptop, right? And this is gonna be the first way we implement dark mode. We're gonna use what the system preference for the device is to set the theme. Now, additionally, if I hit, this should actually say go light, but if I hit, go dark then we are back to the um default which is the light theme and i hit that again and then we are back here and so i can toggle that as many times as i want and we're back so this is what we're going to implement today and i'm going to try and take you on a step-by-step -step journey of how we got it done and hopefully you'll be able to follow along so let's close that for now this is just the file my current um this is the file we'll be working with. As you can see, there is no button to convert to. And we've changed a few of the colors just to make it more legible and more readable when we hover on them. Okay, so the first thing I wanna draw your attention to is that this is a local file. This is not something that lives on the internet. I don't even have to be connected to the internet to see this file. And we know that by looking in the address bar and we can just see here, it starts with file. So. If you want to do the same thing, you would go to file, you would go to your menu file, and then you go to open file, and then you select the HTML file that you want to show in your browser. As you can see, it's got the .html at the end because that's just the file type. So that's what we're going to be doing. I'm not going to cover deployment today because it's outside of the scope of this tutorial, but basically this is what we're doing. All right, cool. So this is our code. This is the HTML code that we just saw. Um, and yeah, it's basically bog standard. Um, and then this is the CSS for that file too. As you can see, I am using CSS variables for the things that I repeat often within the CSF de CSS definitions. So for example, here I'm defining a button and I'm using the variable stroke and also the variable light primary which are defined here in the pseudo um, class root. And this is just the default light theme. So there's nothing here to say that we have a dark theme, we haven't told it about a dark theme or anything, right? So let's do that. So using the first way, which I mentioned, is to use this um, system preferences, we want to find out what the user has set their device to. So how do we find that out? Well, let's visit MDN. 
Right, so in CSS, prefers color scheme is actually a media query you can use to check the system preferences of the device. So it takes one of two arguments, either light or dark, and you can basically say media prefers color scheme dark and then set what you want the dark theme to be. And similarly, you can do the same for light and set what you want the light theme to be. We also want to make sure that this media query is available across as many browsers as possible. And as we can see here, it is. It's available across the board, Samsung Internet, Chrome for Android, Safari, Firefox, um, Edge, all the rest. The only one it's not available for is Internet Explorer. And that's fine because in case you haven't heard, Internet Explorer is going to be discontinued in favor of Edge. So we don't have to worry about that today. So let's copy and paste this from uh, MDN and see what happens. Let's add this to our CSS. Remember, because this is a cascading style sheet, we want to add everything new to the bottom of the file so that it doesn't get overwritten. So we're going to get rid of that last line and let's just call this a uh, body and we're gonna leave everything else the same. So we're saying when the prefers color scheme is dark, we want the body to be this gray and we want the color to be white. This is like a gray slash black kind of color. So let's check that out. Let's make sure we are on dark. Let's go to our file, refresh, bada boom. Bada bing. This is what we told it to do. And this is just doing this, picking this new change up based, as I said, on the prefers color scheme. So if we switch that back to light and we go back, we're back to our white background. Switch that back to dark, we're back to our dark background. All right, so let's tidy this up very quickly. First and foremost, the glaring thing to me is this like huge white background against this image. This is a JPEG and JPEGs don't have transparent backgrounds, but thankfully I do have a PNG version of this file, which I believe I already have in the images. So I'm gonna just go straight into my HTML and look for where I've defined uh, the JPEG for this. And I believe this is it right here. And we're just gonna say PNG. And while we're at it, let's add an alt. Um, that should have been there before. Okay, so now let's refresh. And there we have our PNG file, no more ugly white background. <laughs> okay, so these colors are not really the colors I wanna go for when I'm defining my dark theme. As you can see, the dark uh, purplish kind of color doesn't come up well. The gray, I'm not too, too feeling, especially when I look at the image. This just isn't what I want. When you're picking colors, you wanna make sure you are picking colors that are obviously attractive, but more importantly, that they're accessible. So the web standards body, the W3C, have guidelines on how you can pick accessible colors and how to make sure that your website is accessible. The key thing you need to make sure is that you have strong contrast between colors. So in our example here, we can see that there isn't a lot of contrast between this dark purpley plummy kind of color and the gray. So it's very difficult to read even as some, well, I don't have perfect eyesight, I still wear glasses, but even as someone who doesn't have low vision, I still can't really read that. And then you have to consider people who have other sensory issues, people who have ADHD, autism, or other neurodivergence issues, people who just have dyslexia and just struggle to read in general. You just wanna make sure that things look um, and feel as easy as possible for your users to navigate. So what we're gonna do is we want to make sure that we have colors that have strong contrast, right? And according to the W3C guideline, the ratio of contrast should be 4.5 to one. And this is defined in the W3C um, working group for accessibility, right? So, there are loads of tools online that allow you to understand 
contrast between colors. The one I'm going to be using today is called Contrast Color Checker. This is Contrast Color Checker and it basically lets you see lets you pick colors and give it hexadecimal value so you can pick a background color and a foreground color and it'll tell you which categories it passes depending on the um, color combination and it also gives it a score so we can see if we actually um, increase the lightness of this we can see how these values begin to change because this is not a strong enough contrast right between these two colors so you can also see examples of the text and the copy and even you know changing the different fonts to see what it looks like in different fonts and all of the rest and you can reverse the colors and see what it looks like in the color in the reverse and you know you will still have your pass or fail on the different categories i'm not going to explain each of these categories today just because it's outside the scope of this tutorial but it's important that you have a pass in all of them basically that's how i like to do it so i've already picked my colors so i'm not gonna like go through a whole color picker if you want to know what colors you should use you can actually go online adobe has a color picker thing where you can pick themes canva also has a similar one so there are loads of online tools that allow you to like pick themes and stuff um so my colors are gonna be like this navy and also this sky blue And as you can see, I've inputted those colors, everything has changed. And we can see that the contrast on here is great. Pass, pass, pass. And I think this looks really good. So if I wanted to reverse those colors just to see what it looks like the other way around, maybe if I wanted my light theme to be more like this, then this would be the same. So this is what I'm gonna do for my dark theme background, um, the color of my text in my dark theme. So let's define that in the prefers color scheme. So let's switch that. So this is what it's looking like at the moment. I'm going to go ahead and switch out the rest of the colors for these um, elements and I'll be right back. Okay, so this is what it's looking like with everything all done. And my colors are looking good. And I think this is a really nice dark theme. It doesn't rely on black and white as a lot of dark themes do. So feel free to experiment and explore color combinations that will work for your site and work for you. So if we go back to our system preferences, if we hit light, it should pick up our original default theme with everything as it was and if we go back and we hit dark this is what it's looking like now fantastic okay so that's the first way of implementing dark mode but as you can tell it's quite limiting what happens when a user wants to actually toggle that for themselves, right? So in the other example I showed, we had a button that you can click on that will toggle between dark and light. 
we want to implement that part now and this is going to be a little bit more complex than what we've just done so try and stick along and if you struggle at any point feel free to pause this video or rewind just to see what I've done and what's going on all right so let's get into it the first thing we want to do is actually add that button to the um, HTML. So this is my navigation. I'm just going to, within this, um, I'm going to add a button just under this list. And it's going to be a button and we're going to give it an ID of um, color or let's call it theme. Or let no, <laughs> let's call it toggle theme, right? And we're gonna just write the word toggle in it, and let's see what that looks like. So this is where this is. What if I move this into my list? Let's add a list item. right so this is that now right so that's that so now we actually want to go into the javascript side of things and we want to have a javascript file that's gonna take care of everything so first let's create a directory and then within that directory we want to create a new javascript file and we're just going to call this main don't want to add it to git and then right at the bottom right above the previous JavaScript that's there, we are going to add this. We're gonna call this file, uh, it's gonna be called me. Right, so now when we are in our JavaScript file, let's just make sure something happens when we click that button. So first, let's actually get the button. So let's create a variable. Let's actually make this readable. Let's create a variable and let's call that variable um uh, theme toggle right and let's do a document dot get element by id and i believe the id we gave it was toggle theme right let's just make sure that this so that's going to get that button and what we want to do is when let's add an event listener to theme toggle and we're going to add a click event listener i'm going to function that bear boy whoops sorry and we're going to just console log hi so when we click that button we want a console log hi let's see if, if that's picking anything up right so we're just going to go to inspect and in our console we're just going to have a look right so that's working exactly how we expect it when we click toggle hi comes into the console so we want to actually do something obviously a lot more complex than that we want to, when we click that button, we want the theme to be reversed, right? To be switched. So what's a good way to do this? Let's have an actual think, a brainstorm. So there are a few different ways we can do this. We can check what the system preference is and then implement the toggle based on what the system preference is we could um, ignore the system preference for now and just like reset the theme every time. Hmm. Okay, so because we are using prefers color scheme, which relies on the system preference, we wanna make sure we're taking that into consideration when we are clicking that toggle button, right? So even if my dark mode is set, I still wanna be able to toggle between light and dark. So the first thing we need to do is check the system preference and a good way we can do that um, I think we can do something called um, window dot match media I think window dot match here we go 
So right, so we can use this window.matchmedia to check what the system preference is. And it does this by basically, we can give it the media query that we are interested in, and it's gonna give us a true or false when we call matches on it. So let's do that. So again, we're gonna store this in a variable and we're gonna call this um, um, system is dark and um, the reason I use is is because this is going to give us a true or false so system is dark can be true or false and that semantically it just reads better to me right so we have window dot match media and I believe we just give it the full thing so uh, prefers color scheme dark and we just call it matches oops, matches on that right so this time round let's console log system is dark and let's see if that is giving us what we expect first let's check what we set our system to we set it to dark so we expect it to return a true when we click that button. Let's just refresh to make sure. Let's open up our console. Let's hit toggle and there we go. It says true. And that's exactly what we expected, which is good. We're on the right path. This is exactly what we want. So we wanna get rid of that line for now and we wanna actually start implementing our logic. The first thing we need to realize is that we're actually implementing some kind of toggle function, right? So we're going to have to actually use a combination of HTML and CSS to get this off. It's not just going to be the um, JavaScript. We want to add a class that has the rules that we want, um, depending on what we want. <laughs> that didn't make any sense. Okay. We want to add a class. If it's a dark theme, we want to be able to add a class that says these are all the rules for the dark theme at this class and therefore it will present in the browser as a dark theme. Similarly, if we click that button again, we want to remove that class so only the light theme is available, right? So this is what we're going to do. We are going to, in our CSS, we're going to do something um, Cool. So we're going to redefine, we're going to have two defaults. At the moment, we have one default and that default is the light theme. We're going to have another default. And this is because we want to make sure that if the system preference is not dark, that you can still toggle, right? So we're going to come in here. We're going to copy all of that. And we are going to, uh, 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 uh. here we're going to just name this and add some comments, dark theme, and let's call it default, default dark theme. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to add a class dark onto body. So for all the body, we're just going to add a class dark onto the body. Right, and then in our CSS, what we're going to do is we're going to say if the system is not dark, right, add this class dark. That's what we want to do. That's the first step. So if the system is not dark and the theme is not dark, add this class. Let's start with the first tiny bit of this we want to say if the system is not dark add this class okay so now let's add our if statement so if
So right, we've said here, if the system is not dark, let's toggle, let's be able to toggle this, right? So to check this, we're gonna have to change our system to light, just to check that that works. So it's light now and we're in here and we hit toggle and there we go. Right, so that works as expected. The toggle function is happening and everything is great. This is exactly what we want, but this is just the tip of the iceberg. We also want this to work if the system is dark. We wanna be able to add this toggling function too. So how would we do that? So let's go back into our system preferences and change everything to dark and it's dark. And if we hit toggle, it doesn't go to light, right? Because we've said, if the system is dark, then do this, right? Now, let's do exactly what we just did, um, but in our prefers color scheme block, right? So what did we do? We actually added a new class dark to our default um, dark theme. But because the dark theme is already the default in prefers color scheme, we don't actually have to do that. And we also don't have to add a light theme because our default is already light and we can fall back to that regardless of what happens. So as you can see, I've commented out um, this here and this is what we're going to do. So we're going to add another class and we're going to call this class system dark preference. It should be a different class name to the class name you used before to avoid any conflicts. So we're just going to copy that and put that all through exactly as we've just done. In our HTML as well, we're also gonna give the body the same class. Oops. Now, even though we've given the body the same class, and we've defined that here, it's not going to pick up the dark theme if we do not have the dark theme enabled. So if we go to light in our system preferences and we come here, even though when we inspect our HTML, even though the body has system dark preference, because this is only defined in the prefers color scheme media query, it's not gonna pick it up. So we don't have anything to worry about defining it point blank there. Right, so in our event list now, what we're doing is we are toggling this dark class. We also need to do something with that systems dark class that we've just added. We actually need to remove it because by default it's there. So we just need to remove it. So we do document.body.classlist.remove and we can give it that class, system dark preference to remove. Now, why do we remove instead of toggle? Well, system dark preference and dark are the same rules. They're just defined in different parts of the CSS. And so when we start implementing dark, because that is not inside our prefers color scheme block, if we have a look at our CSS, dark is not in our prefers color scheme block. So essentially what we're saying is remove anything to do with prefers color scheme and just rely on the default dark and light mode. So we remove that and we just, after this, when we click, we'll just rely on the default light and dark mode. Now this is gonna happen if the system is not dark. So really what we want to do is if the system is dark so we have an else here and then also toggle like this so if the system is not dark we only want to toggle the dark class however if the system is dark we want to remove that system dark preference class which is there by default and then implement the toggle that we have before. So let's see if this works. So this is dark and let's implement that toggle. There we go. There we go. 
And so that's working exactly as we expect. That toggling function is doing just what we wanted, just exactly as we wanted. Now I'm gonna take some time to refactor this and tidy it up before we move on to our next section. Okay, so I've gone ahead and refactored some of that code and tidied it up a bit. I've basically put things into variables. So we have a has system dark class variable, which basically just um, contains a Boolean that, you know, the system dark preference class is set on the body. And then we have another variable is dark. Now this is a little bit more complex. It basically uses, takes the value of this and that will be the first argument. And it says, if this and the system is dark, right? So these two things have to be true in this first portion, or the body has the dark class on it. So that's how we know that we are in the dark mode. If the system has the dark class and the system has been set to dark, so if the HTML um, has this class on it, and in our system preferences, we've set it to dark, then we know it's dark because it's possible that the HTML will have the class, but we've set it to light and it wouldn't be dark, right? So I hope that makes sense. And then um, we have also said, you know, if that is the case, so if that's dark, or if that's not, if that returns false, or the body has the dark class on it, then we know it's dark. So those are the two ways that we know it's dark, right? And then we always want to remove system dark preferences when we toggle, because that's the default. And then we want to pass this value into the toggle. So the thing with toggle is that it can take two arguments, right? It can take the class name that you want to toggle, and it can take a true or false value. So let's read a little bit more about this. So in the MDN documentation, it says here that toggle can take two parameters. Token, which is the string, which is the class that you want to toggle usually, or and force, which is an optional parameter. So it says, if included, this turns toggle into a one way only operation. If set to false, then token will only be removed and not added. If set to true, then token will only be added and not removed. So in our case, we are saying, we are actually doing something a little bit complicated, even though it's just the one line, right? So this is dark is going to give us a true or false, right? And we're saying when we click toggle, we want to do the reverse of whatever this value is. So I'm going to add a little bit of pseudo code here and I'm going to say, so in the case that is dark equals to true, what we are saying is basically we're going to do document dot body dot class list dot toggle dark. And we're going to flip it and we're going to say false. And that's because in that scenario, if, if is dark is true, in that scenario, we want to only remove the class and not add it, right? So if is dark is true, then we only want to remove dark. We don't want to add dark, right? So that's why we switch it. So then in the case of is dark being false, we are reversing it to say true. So if it's not dark, then we do want to add it. We want to add the class, not remove it. This is basically a one line way of doing the same if else statement that we had before. Um, it's a lot more succinct to read, although it could be argued it's not easier to read. You'd have to really understand what's going on here, but that's okay. I hope I made it as clear as possible. If that's too convoluted or if that's too difficult to understand, using the if else statement is absolutely fine. Don't feel like you have to do it this way.
Okay, so let's see how things are looking now on the website. So we know that our system is set to dark and we are seeing the dark theme as expected. What happens when we hit toggle? We have a light theme, folks, and we hit toggle again, a dark theme, and there we go. So the last thing we wanna do is that we wanna make sure that when the user visits again, if they click off this browser, if they click off this page and they close their browser and they visit our web page again, that the settings persist. And the way we're gonna do that is by using local storage. So what is local storage? Local storage, as the name suggests, is a local storage on your browser. It's a key value um, kind of data structure where you can set a key and give it a value. So in our case, what we're going to do is we are going to set a key that's theme and we're going to give it a value based on what the theme that the user toggles to. So the first thing we want to do is we actually want to uh, set a variable of the, let's just call it theme or let's call it chosen theme right so then we want to access local storage and we can actually set item on local storage which is great and the first value will be the um key which in this case will just be called theme and the second value will be chosen theme right now this isn't going to do anything because we haven't actually said what chosen theme is so let's say what chosen theme should be so we actually want to have an if statement and want to say if the chosen theme sorry if the document dot body dot class list contains uh, dark then we know that the chosen theme is dark right and then we want to come here we want to say else the chosen theme is light and then so that's how we're going to set our chosen theme and then there's something else we need to consider too because every time the user closes the web page and then opens the web page again the initial classes are going to be set which is to say that the system dark preference class is going to be there again right so we need to have something that takes care of that we need to override that in our local storage logic so let's set another item in local storage and let's call this override system theme yeah and let's set that to true so we always want to override it right so we don't just want to set the theme we also want to get the theme and do something with it right so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have an if statement and we're going to say if we've set the override then let's do some stuff and how do we check we set the override well because local storage is a key value structure we can call the key and get the value so the way we do that is by calling local storage get item and we give it the key and in this case the key is override system theme and if that is true, if we have overridden the system theme or we have told it to override the system theme, then we want to do some stuff. The first thing we want to do is similar to here, we want to remove, oops, we want to remove this class. Right? So we just we want to actually like implement the override, which is to remove that class. And then we want to implement the toggle for the theme however we don't need this boolean at the end oops we don't need this boolean at the end and we don't actually really want to toggle dark 
we want to toggle what the user had saved it as before. So in that case, we actually want to get from the local storage the actual current theme, which I've already defined in a variable here as current theme. So we have local storage, get item, and we give it the key name, which is theme. So we can have current theme in here and save that. Now let's refresh. So we are in dark at this moment and our system preference is also dark. When we hit toggle, we're going to be in light. Now what happens when we close the page and we open it again? We expect it to be light, but let's have a look. And voila, it's light. I didn't expect that to work. <laughs> okay, so it's light. And if we have a look in our console and we just type in local storage, you will see that the um, values that we set are in there. So we've got two things in here, override system theme, true, and the theme is light. And if we hit toggle again and we just refresh and we hit local storage again, and you'll see that the theme is dark. So that's the way that you can implement your dark theme and light theme and save the user preferences. And it's quite robust because as we mentioned before, you can look at what the system has been set to on the device and you can implement the CSS and allow the user to take control. So there are going to be other things that I want to do here just to tidy things up. This button is quite ugly, so I'm going to like tidy that up. Um, and also the code as well. We're going to put things in functions and just make it look all pretty. So this is the finished JavaScript file. I have basically kept a lot of the same variable names except for a few just to make it a bit more succinct um, and they're the same. And so we have the get saved theme function, which as I just discussed, checks the override status and does what needs to be done in that situation. So it removes the system preference, system dark preference class and then toggles the correct toggles the saved theme in our local storage. And then we have the toggle theme, which this is, you know, the first time somebody ever visits your site, they're not going to have anything in the local storage. So this is where we actually do that first initial toggling, which is the first thing we did when we're in the JavaScript file. Then we have the um, get color mode. This should be actually get theme button text. Um, let's change that. So get theme and where are we calling that? Yeah, get theme. Now the get theme button text, the assign theme button text, um, both the light and dark, they basically just um, do the styling for this button and make makes sure that dependent on the theme that the correct thing shows, 
there's still some things I need to fix with that. So I'm not really going to go into that today because it's just a button. You can style the button any how you want and you can just have it say toggle and therefore you won't need to change the actual text that's in there. Um, then we have the set and save theme, which is where the local storage stuff is happening as well as some button stuff that I mentioned earlier. And that's what the JavaScript is looking like. And that's pretty much it, right? So if we go back to our page, we refresh and we hit that go light, go dark, we have the expected behavior. So all in all, that's pretty much it. We have a nice combined way of doing dark mode that takes into consideration what the user wants and has set in their system and also what they want and what they have set when they toggle things. And it also saves it to local storage. So when they come back and they visit on the same browser, they will have the same settings set. So I hope this has been useful. Um, there are additional resources. I used MDN if you get stuck is a great resource um, and also the color contrast checker website that's a great resource for making sure you, the colors you use have appropriate contrast and finally as I mentioned earlier there is a written version of this tutorial with the files on github which I'll link below also thanks for watching this all the way through let me know if you have any questions any comments any feedback please keep it like friendly like don't come for me just tell me like if you have questions in it um and you can follow me at lola de lola on twitter so yeah thanks for watching subscribe and like this video and share and all that good stuff i'll see you another time